Okay, for an overview of the data. It's all next rad radar. It has both reflectivity by key stations, but not all of them. Quite a few of them, though. It has regions it has larger regions I have velocities and there is a in this case I got all of them and it has states so there's a tremendous amount of data here, and I'm not sure how to begin, but these are all still frame shots captured five minutes apart. I think for the most case, there's no chance for censorship, which is why I did it, because I found that the censorship was blatant. So as a first test. And some of these have more data than others. If you notice this bar up here, this is the length of the movie. If I arm it and then drag it back in time, you'll see that this entire thing is loaded. There are other areas where I don't have this much data, but still. I'm going to begin with this as a test to see if I can synchronize the audio and the video. And to put it out there for people to advise on how they would like me to package this. I'm kind of thinking one per tab which would be one, two, three, four, five different videos, more or less. Now there will be a few jumps in here because my computer did crash. In most cases I was able to turn it back on quick enough that I didn't lose too much of the continuity of the data, but when it finally crashed for four hours yesterday, I said, okay, now is the time to put it out there. I'm also interested in this area because at this point, somewhere around here. Uh, uh, this is when that long valley area seemed to start acting up. Most of the storms here came through here, right over me, here. This is handy because there's a station here, a station here, a station here, a station here, 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 and then Chicago, and then Minneapolis, too. So many of those stations we can see from the other station, and that'll help demonstrate some of the things I'm looking for. You'll see down here that there is a time and a date and it may be moving a little bit fast although the movies are going to become very long if I slow it down too much and before I'm done I'm going to give a good plug for the swim software because it's really quite the tool 
was built up and populated for ham radio understanding of the solar and ionospheric conditions. Um, but it's a delightful little toy to play with. Okay, so that was the movie. I'm going to come back and slow it down just a little bit. And by putting in a 10 a tenth of a second pause between frames and just take a quick peek and see if that's tolerable or not go from there. Well, it certainly keeps the, the speed down so that in a movie people could find what they want. And actually, I like the way that progressed. I'm interested in identifying a couple of questions. I don't really have answers, but I have a lot of questions. For instance, I want to know what the hell we just saw there. Look at that. Okay, here, this whole half of the country is virtually clean of this type of clutter. Now, if I go forward, watch how fast this just clouds up. Now, later on, I'll show you what I'm what I call cosmic bullets that seem to rain down through. And as they pass, they turn on each of these stations, which then do other things, which is kind of mind-boggling to me, but I don't know what they're doing. Um, in this area, I also have these So we'll be able to look in here too. One of these is infrared and one of them is visual, but I don't see how visual it could be. This seems to be day and night. way to look at the weather, especially since everything blows up over my house. Uh, this storm and this storm peel off nodules that come through me here right on Lake Michigan here. For those that don't know, this is Michigan. And so is this. Okay, so we finished that. Now we'll go into some regional ones. And I'm going to run these straight forward. This is the area where things will change towards the end. There's a next red station there. Look at how those things popped up. Okay, well, I'm starting to see some of those cosmic bullets. 
but I'll wait a little while and show them to you in greater detail. Look at how this is pouring out of here. And of course there's a there's beam energy. Well, that was a jump. That was when I crashed. This may be something more than it looks like. I have seen both circles and squares here and I think what they're doing now is they're hiding the circles within a storm to make them much harder to find and they're moving the circles which tells me something about what the circles are not but what Dutch calls harp rings are something else. Now these I call beams and there that was a beautiful beam. In fact I'm gonna stop it there. And I'm gonna scoot backwards. There you go. Okay, now this I find interesting because this tells me that that beam, which appears to be coming from here out, because it gets fatter, that lasts for one frame, two frames, changes color. And so it happens during a two frame interval, which implies 10 minutes. But I don't know enough to know if it's an open shutter type of thing for a five minute video or if they're just taking one picture every five minutes which would mean that if it's in two frames on the average it could be perhaps a five minute long beam or it turned on and off more than once which is also a very serious possibility Of course, I'm at less than the halfway point here. And although the t clock is ticking slowly, I'll later on, be with greater when we get down deeper into the detail, so there's some nice circles moving with the storm, hiding in the storm, I think. And also, I wasn't really looking at this area. I actually began up here, came across to Duluth, and then down in the Michigan area uh, at my house because that's where the weather was. But then I came to look for where there was no weather. Now, notice all of this. I think this is the Long Valley. And that beam is something that started about halfway through here and that red light by the way means a coronal mass ejection inbound I think <coughs> but we can ask the expert about that later on and I'll make sure I let you know These kind, of, these things intrigue me. It's as though they're spawned, and and of course, looking carefully, you can see there's beams of energy in there. Well, maybe not. I can see them, but then I know what the greater detailed data looks like. This is definitely getting into when we started getting venting in this area. If it's really venting. I think I'm going to put this on hold. Actually, I should hold this first. 
if you can't hear, I have a phone call. So hold, we go. Gosh, I'm not sure if I'm on or off now. Okie doke. I'm going to go into some greater detail now. Going into state. I'll start I see these are regions again okay well Take a look at this one. My house and a tremendous amount of storm activity. These storms, this is Duluth. La Crosse is around here. I think that's a Minneapolis. Maybe that's Lacrosse. Green Bay. Milwaukee. Ah, 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 ah. Let's stop that. This is one of the things I want to identify by some of the next rad radar experts that say nothing is happening. Those are my cosmic bullets. Okay, one frame at a time. One, two, three. They're always parallel. They don't always come from this direction. Sometimes they come down, or maybe more like that. Sometimes, I think, they go this way. But I'm going to have to wait to prove that. So that's two frames, so that's over 10 minutes. Now this one didn't move. This one got dim, which makes me wonder if it isn't a time exposure. Then it disappeared, but one showed up down here. And that stayed, and another one came. Now notice how this one goes to that one. And that's why the time stamps are going to come in handy because I believe Green Bay is throwing a signal up here. Now, I don't know how to control that. Although I suppose I could work around it easily enough, but Now after those bullets come by, these type of patterns emerge. And those types of patterns are explosive, but slow. They have a radial nature and they also spin. They also have something that I liken to a Jacob's Ladder climbing spark. They often defy the general wind direction. And yet they look like an electrical phenomena to me. And down here you can see this Michigan station blasting 
turning these things on, but they're not really on yet. Now that is quite the display, but we can see it better by going over to Michigan and watching it and then synchronizing it with the clock. There was a good pattern there too. However, this is, I believe, hybrid. I believe this is both satellite and next rat. Now that, that right there. These things. I'm going to go back to where it starts. It's a line. Now, it'll disappear at the lake. <coughs> However, that is not completely unrealistic because I live two blocks from the lake. <coughs> and that lake does not change temperature. It's always the same temperature. But watch as that thing comes against the general flow of the wind. And I'm just going to turn it back on. It comes against the flow. This guy is doing the same thing, and yet it's... Th these are clouds. These are not. I don't know what these are. There's my cosmic bullets that turn these things on, which are different than the storms. Now here's a circle hiding just in front of the storm. Here's another circle. And these circles will continue to advance in front of the storms maybe to encourage them, but I think because of the work of Dutch, these things are being hidden within the storm, and they're visible in two ways. Uh, number one, you can find a lack of clouds because of them, and therefore there's a lack of data in the data, which gives you data. Um, but I really went looking when there were no storms, Look at how little Green Bay is. No excitement there at all until those cosmic bullets come by and it turns all of them on, although, and not always in a predictable manner. This I would have thought would have turned on better, more like these did. Look at that. Look at these circles. Oh, and that was a shot off to Michigan and back, but uh, that's still a question too. I don't know which way they're going. The fat end as it goes out implies it's heading out, but it could also be coming down from space to that thing so that the fat end is actually closer to... Look at this. Here's another one of my Jacob's Ladder type phenomena. There were more cosmic bullets. And, although they're rare, I've heard Dutch say that he didn't see the squares on Nexrad. Um, I found them, but that may... Oh, okay, well... Th those cosmic bullets came the other way. I'm pretty sure I just saw that. I'm going to go back a little bit. See which way the cosmic bullets are going up this time. Oh, wow, that was a good catch. The cosmic bullets went up to make all this noise. And this noise has stratifications and radial natures. Now we're going to see cosmic bullets coming this way. Do you see them? Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, and again, now every single one of these is coming out of Green Bay, coming out of Milwaukee, coming out of Chicago. Okay, so maybe they're not what I thought they were. And that's probably coming out of Minneapolis, although that one too, and I'm not really sure how far they go 
because they tend to believe that the next red radar station has a limit. However, the reason I came to this area was because I believe these things are interlinked by something like gigabeam technology, which I tried to use um, to communicate across the rooftops of Manhattan until Time Warner got stupid. But the things can go miles and the beams are no larger than a um, silver dollar. So you can put a dish antenna up and nothing gets past it. So you can't put another antenna behind it to capture the data. It's a very secure networking environment. Now look at how many beams are coming out of here. We have a lot of communication between these stations is what I'm guessing. And now what they're doing, why, how they're working as tandem. Kinda pretty storms we're getting. You see the circles and you'll probably see it pop out in front. There's one of my little Jacob's Ladders that lingers. It's still lingering. It died over the lake, but I think those are actually clouds. And this thing dies here because of the frigidity of the thing. But there, look at the circles. Oh, wow. That was pretty cool. No wonder it crashed then. It was a mess. Okay. So out of this one Michigan site, we're beaming one, two, three. Uh, this is going to Green Bay. This one's going to Sullivan, which is also Milwaukee, although it's really about 50 miles west of us or something. And this goes, I don't know where. Sometimes it goes up here to the bottom of Fond du Lac. Watch that frenzy. And that what, what a beautiful, uh, I wish I'd caught the end of that one. Okay, now I'm gonna go into these guys. Now these guys I captured and numbered by coming across the top of the United States. So I started with Seattle and Portland. That's around Yellowstone. Montana, Great Falls. Billings, Glasgow, Montana, the Air Force Base, North Dakota, Fargo, North Dakota, Duluth. Duluth is one of my real targets. Now look at the stratification in there. Now what I see in these things, I consider fascinating. So let's just start on this one. And my question is, what the hell is going on? Pretty simple question. This happened because of a beam of energy that struck it. That's a cloud. There's a beam coming in. That can turn these off. There is a beam that came through. Okay, wait a minute. That was a good example was a good example of data and the lack of data. <laughs> I wish I could figure out how to stop doing that. foot on 
the gas pedal here. Okay, look at this. This is a beam of energy slicing through that cloud and probably with what I would consider destructive interference canceling it out, although I don't think the cloud is really effective. Affected. I think it's a communication link. Um, the ground clutter has been turned off for or because of this beam too. So this is a, a snapshot of a beam that you can see and one that you couldn't see unless there was something there. So it makes me wonder how often is there something there that we just can't see. And that beam stays quite persistently. But I never saw a second negated beam out there. Now, none of this yet is what I find fascinating. Boom. Okay, well, that didn't, that didn't trigger. Okay, a beam. This gets big. Another beam will come in and turn this into bright colors. Then they differentiate and they often and normally cause torsion. I saw a beam come in. Look at that stratification. All of those look like Jacob's ladders to me. Beam coming in gets big. dances. And again, looking at that speed, I did not see a beam of negated energy while the clouds were there. Ah, there was a beam coming down that way. Look at that unbelievable And again, they're not following the patterns of the wind. They didn't follow that storm. So maybe they're at a totally different altitude. That's what I like to see because I have no idea what the hell it is. And remember, these things are five minute intervals, so it's not instantaneous, but it's pretty darn fast. Also notice the effect of Lake Superior up here. It comes down here. And that's enough. Oh, I like that too. That was sweet. Lake Superior does affect the true storms, but more so that ground clutter, which is not really a storm. I don't know what it is. I, I, although I have a hunch. But this video is to ask questions, not to give answers. I like the fact that these things are spawning what almost appear to be clouds, but I can't prove it. Those coming into it are almost certainly clouds and, you know, I just find that pretty. Except I wonder what the hell they're doing and I'm a little bit afraid they're playing with fire in a dynamite shed. So, whatever they can do, they can turn it on and off in a five minute interval. And I have to assume I'm missing a lot of data if they're only taking a snapshot once every five minutes. The amount of beams, inbound, outbound, whatever. Um, must be five times. Or more. <laughs> A lot more.
rising storms. You see, that's one of our problems. This could be part of our circular effect. It falls outside of this, but I think it's virtually an equal increment out to about here. Not quite, but close. However, whatever happens in here, it doesn't seem to reach out past here. But this is a good distance. I don't know what that is, but it's hundreds of miles. Okay, now where am I up here? So that's Minneapolis, La Crosse. Um, I actually think I want to go to the one in Michigan right across the lake. There's, there's one up here and there's one down here. And from this one we can see both Milwaukee, this one, and this one. And that's where I first realized there was communication. This is Milwaukee. Upper Michigan. Now this is a good one because we can see if something comes from here. We can see if it comes from Sullivan, which is about here. Milwaukee's here. And this is Green Bay. That being... I'm sorry. Yeah, Green Bay. And then so Duluth is up here somewhere. But for giggles... I'm going to slow or speed this up by taking away my tenth of a second to see if we can handle that. And especially since I don't even know if I'm recording or if I'm on pause at the moment. I'll keep my foot on the brake. Now it's amazing that you can actually see more data when there are no clouds, which is when nobody looks at these things. Okay, ground clutter. Okay, this is a beam coming in. So that beam coming in builds that. I'm going to just go back up to go ahead. And this is one of those storms. These are actual storms, though. So this will obscure data unless we can see a line through it. I think that one was heading to a next rad station in Canada, actually. A little jump there from a computer crash, but that's very consistent. And there's nothing here. I don't know what's here, but I'll bet you if we vector that, we're going to end up at Duluth or who knows, North Dakota, Alaska. surprised I haven't seen a good example of a spinning vortex after it turned reds and greens and and also I haven't seen any shots heading straight for Milwaukee although that damn thing is shooting all over the place at the moment isn't it yeah no point going back now I'm fascinated by this double flux. Jacksonville and um, St. Louis have constant beams. 
uh, and the beam activity in that little corner that Dutch is playing with in Nevada. Now, the growth of that thing I find stunning. And this is almost too fast. But I think I can put this out at 25 frames per second, which should allow people at this speed to grab any frame they want and help me correlate graph out and determine if a signal coming out of one of these seems to be coming into another or if they are in any way interlinked by a laser-like beam or if it's coming from a satellite and if so is it geostationary or lower? My thinking about the beams is that if you look at them and they get wider leaving a, s a known station, one automatically sees something that is spreading out. However, if it was a very coherent laser focused beam it could be coming from over the shoulder of a low level weather satellite and being close to the satellite would look wider as it traveled down to the earth to hit the next red station it would look thinner and therefore these beams could be inbound However, I also think I see them talking to each other, so... What? Tremendous control they seem to have. And, and what fine-tuning they're doing. They're not just trying to create propensities for storminess. This is as though they're orchestrating a very complicated ballet. Oh, that was a real pretty Jacob's Ladder type effect. And almost constant beams. And the, the color of the beams confuzzles me too. <laughs> and I like that double effect down there. Okay, I'm going to pop into velocity now and just to show you what these are. Okay, so this is something I didn't start collecting until there. And then up here, that was 724, 1700 o'clock or so. And this makes it easier to see the torsion that I'm interested in. Although, and the beam's coming in too. But I think think what they're showing. This is velocity. This is next rad velocity at the most sensitive scale. And I th and again those Jacob's ladders just tickle me to death. But I think the red is stuff heading towards you and the green is stuff going away from you. Um, but they get the thing to spin. And it's often more that the red's on the top and the green's on the bottom, or vice versa. It isn't always as this shows. Also notice the jerky nature here. I actually think they're censoring me. Um, but they'd have to be doing it at a pretty fast real-time rate. So... Did I show a little of everything? No.
States. I guess I did show that. So... I guess I showed a good example about each of those. Find the Wisconsin, Virginia, Florida, Mexico, New York, Michigan. Okay. This probably this will show Duluth, Lake Superior, Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Michigan, with a station here, a station here, a station here, Chicago, St. Louis is down here, but we'll see beams coming out of it. Um, that's probably Minneapolis, that's probably La Crosse, and anyone who loves Vince Lombardi would guess that that would be Green Bay, and little old me right about there and a beautiful storm. Now, I don't know if other people have noticed this, but the storms these days are creating thunder so powerful. Now, this is constant out of St. Louis. And these are real clouds. And these real clouds popping up over the lakes is what is generally called lake effect. But this lake effect is even stopping this ground clutter, which I think is just ionized air pushed into a, and see down here is St. Louis saying hello. This, I, I think, is clouds that were precipitated by one of the Jacob's Ladder effect. So look at these rings in front of the storms. See, we got a lot of storm in here. And that stuff just popped up, but a circle. See the cosmic bullets and then these things turning on, which is not the same as this. Look how that just kind of grows right out of the swirl. You now, saw those. See if you catch that. bunch of cosmic bullets come through. Okay, things get quiet. They're turning off, and now my cosmic bullets. In fact, I think I just learned something there. I'm moving forward again. Okay, right there. There's a beam coming out of here. Disappears. This is St. Louis. So it's chronic, so to speak. This. I bet you any money that's coming from Milwaukee straight down to St. Louis, which is where this is coming to, which would put St. Louis about there, more or less. 
We also have one here. We have one here. This. I think there's a Nexrad station here in Canada. But that doesn't quite. It could be. Could be another frame forward. We can see this one coming. And my hunch is it's heading right towards Milwaukee. Sullivan. And this guy. Can't quite tell where it's going, but it's not going there. Okay, and now what you'll see and see like this, there there is nothing here. Milwaukee's a little lower and Green Bay is a little higher. This might be heading for Green Bay. From here to Green Bay and from here um I don't know. I don't know. But I need some help. And once those things come through, then all that noise pops up. And yet we still have little things like this, which become true. This was one of those Jacob's ladders that turned into a real storm. And, and, and kept, like this one was spawned off of it. A circle hiding in there. <coughs> 